Charlie Guest Marino just reported as JP Morgan is lifting its basic hourly pay by a fifth. Uh, is he trying to, to sort of sh sh get away from this sort of fat cat persona? Uh, Jamie Dimon, we're talking about. We want to go to former Wells Fargo chairman and CEO Richard Kovacevic. Uh, Richard, uh, the, the bank's always in the crosshairs. Uh, any election cycle, it feels like this time around, uh, your industry getting it from both sides of the political aisle. Will this kind of thing help? Well, I, I, I know Jamie very well, and I think Jamie's a rational decision maker. And I think he thinks this is good for his company. Uh, I think he thinks it's good for his employees. And it may be also helpful given the political environment, but I think this is just basically uh, Jamie making what he thinks is the right decision for his company and his four employees. And I want to ask you about the, uh, the state of the economy uh, right now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average at an all-time high. You know, but I'm looking at Fed data here with respect to demands for bank loans. And, and even though auto loans are going up and credit card loans are going up, you go back to the second quarter of 2012, uh, auto loans, the demand for them were up 38%. Now they're up 18%. It all feels like it's starting to tail off. If you kind of put a finger in the wind at some of this data, it feels like we're going in the wrong direction, even though the market's moving to all-time highs. How do, how do we connect those dots? How do, we, how do we reconcile that? Well, I think you're right about the economy. I think it's, it's growing at 2% as it has for the last seven years. That is not robust, and you can't have double-digit increases in revenue or profits at, at that level of uh, economic increase. But what you have is because of the central bank's uh, quantitative easing around the world, almost all asset classes are overvalued. And you take uh, government bonds or even negative uh, interest rates today. So these are extraordinary uh, overvaluations of, of, as, of many assets. The, the one uh, area that has the least amount of overvalue is the U.S. stock market. And that's because uh, our economy, although slow, is still one of the best in the world. The dollar is strong. And and the dividend you can receive by stocks in the market is significantly above what you can get in the bond market. You know, it's so and, amazing. And you, I'm sorry, but that you make that point. Imagine someone who felt very defensive coming into the year and loaded up on utility stocks. Not, not only are they making a killing on the dividends, but the, they're up 20, over 20% 20 on these utility, on the utility index. It's, it's, it's actually remarkable in my mind because, you know, you always see when the market's at all-time highs, the narrative instantly is that there's irrational exuberance. But this particular rally right now is, is anything but irrational exuberance. Exactly. That's what I said. There's, where else are you going to put it? Uh, uh, cash is worth zero. And if you go into these really overvalued assets and interest rates increase, you're going to lose your principal, let alone uh, not have the dividend, uh, a higher dividend or a higher fixed uh, income by dividends. So I think it's a, a rational behavior uh, uh, that is a response to the, what I would call the irrational behavior of central banks around the world now for seven years. Well, well you, know, you, you talked about bond markets, and, and of course it's the bond, our bond yields peaked in 1981, so you could almost argue that we've been in, in a, a three-decade, uh, you know, almost four-decade rally in bonds. And every single year, every expert on Wall Street says the great transition is going to come and yields are going to fly up and everyone's going to move. But how long can the Fed keep this going? I mean, you've got almost $12 trillion in, in global debt that's yielding negative rates. It can't go on forever. How does this end? Well, it's not going to end uh, in, a, in a positive way, I can tell you, and the end is close. And I think, I think our stock market is saying the end is close because it, uh, the fundamentals uh, would not cause us to be having record after record stock markets, especially with Brexit and everything else. Right. But the, uh, people are, 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 go, are, are taking their money and putting it in the stock market because they know the end is near in the rest of the asset classes. Before uh, I let you go, and I don't want to really put you on a spot on a, from a political point of view, but we've got to consider uh, what's going to happen in, in November. We just heard Bernie Sanders, who really got a lot of his ideas on the Democratic platform, a higher minimum wages, access to primary health care, low-cost prescription. He's attacking profits at publicly traded companies, free college. And this is a, uh, this is a cornucopia of, you know, of, of great free stuff. But can our economy at almost $20 trillion of debt handle it? I mean, which candidate would be best for the economy? Not saying I want you to endorse anyone, but a lot of people want to know. Well, I don't think either candidate is going to be great for the economy, uh, quite frankly. Uh, you know, the difficulty I have, like most Americans, is, is how do you vote for someone you don't trust? Uh, the majority of Americans don't trust either candidate at the moment. 
And so it's a very, very difficult decision to make. And I don't think either uh, uh, the Americans even understand where they're going to be on the economic side. Uh, I don't understand any of Trump's policies. Uh, they don't make any sense. And obviously, Hillary's gone way left. And uh, we can't afford uh, all the promises that are being made here on the campaign trail when we have the level of debt and deficits that we have. So it's, um, it's a, a scary situation, quite frankly. All right, Richard Kobasevich, uh, former CEO and chairman of Wells Fargo. Really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.